Hey out there in Radio Land, KC8ZKI, the QRP guy, back with another video for you guys. It's been a while. I was uh, at Dayton a couple of weekends ago, wandering about, looking at all the uh, exciting amateur radio gear there. And I walked by a table and I saw this on the table and it was uh, decoding CW on the screen and uh, just looked very different than anything else that I had been seeing that day. So I walked over and took a look at it and spoke to a few people sitting at the table that had come all the way from India to show us this radio. And uh, I thought, wow, that's really cool. And I asked her, uh, do you have enough of these that if I come back later, I'll still be able to buy one? And she assured me that yes, they had enough. I would be able to buy one later. And indeed, I was able to buy one later. So when I came back later, I actually met the founder of HF Signals. Uh, this radio was is his work. Uh, his name is Ashar Farhan, V-U-2-E-S-E. -E, and he developed this project uh, to encourage people all over the world to get involved in uh, actively learning about SDR radio. Uh, building and modifying radios is fun, and in this case, He's built it for you and you can modify it. So everything is open source. It's built on uh, a Raspberry Pi framework. So the software is running on a Raspberry Pi and then the hardware is integrated uh, with the Raspberry Pi as an SDR. So let me show you a few things about it. So I've got it hooked up to a small battery here and I've got my Chameleon uh, F-Loop magnetic antenna hooked up to it and we're indoors it's kind of a rainy day today so it's a good day to do a video so when you fire it up this is the screen you see it's uh if i can zoom in you see uh hey it looks like tubes right it's pretty cool um you know if you any of those of you that are familiar with raspberry pi you know there's your raspberry pi menu there uh, but this link here is the link for the actual sbitx radio so you press this link i think i pressed it did i Oh, there we go. And it brings up the SBITX radio. And there we go. There's the interface for the radio. I'm on 20 meters. I'm set to CW. And it uh, is ready to go. I've got my little key connected. It's transmitting and it's, uh, you know, like with, with the uh, magnetic loop antenna, you're kind of tuned by sound until it's the loudest. Let me see if I can find a CW. It looks like the, I saw some POTA earlier. I don't see anybody. Oh, there's somebody. I just saw someone. There. Ooh, did I go too, too fast past him? No. My step is set to 10 hertz, so it's a pretty slow step. There we go, we've got somebody. And you see down there in the lower window, it's decoding. It's a fairly weak signal, but it uses FL Digi to decode. So it's using the FL Digi engine, which any of you have used FL Digi. It's an excellent uh, decoder, as good as it gets. And then it's also got the macros here that I can press to send, or I can get a keyboard here. And one of the other neat things is that it's got a web interface. And so let me turn on the web interface. So if you bring up the web interface, you get a, a bigger screen and uh, it's a little easier to see, right? And if I hit here, I can scroll down and there's my keyboard and there's my macros so I can pre-send macros you can you can go in and edit the macros very similar to n1mm if you've ever tuned or I'm sorry set up n1mm macros uh, it's set up the same way in a in a text file um, so there you have CW so everybody wants to see FT8 right so let's let's hit it, the uh, 20 meter button and we'll go through the band stack. It's got band stacking, which is pretty cool, right? Whoops, what did I do? I 
think I just closed the radio instead of the, <laughs> I did. It's a lot easier with the mouse. Let's start the radio back up. Okay, and now I'm gonna go through the band stacks. That's close, that's FT4, let's go down to FT8. For digital mode, I'm gonna set, there is an actual built-in FT8 mode. So if I get this thing set up, just tune my antenna here. Turn down the audio volume. You'll see it'll start decoding there on the left. It just decoded the last 15 seconds of FT8. And again, I have macros at the bottom. I can uh, call CQ or I can uh, touch one of these and answer a CQ. So let's try to do that. Let's see if we can't answer one that's relative. I'm an indoor antenna. So let's get one that's relatively strong so we actually have a chance. Now how about this guy? Um, who do I see here? Uh, CQW2C. Well, he's probably got a pile of that. Sounds like a... I see I've got a SWR of 2.0, so I'm gonna try to tune that a little better. Ooh. That's better, 1.2. So we'll let that go for just a second. I don't want to waste too much time trying to work FT8. You know, and I've got the monitor up so that I can hear when it's transmitting. That's adjustable down here, side tone. And TX pitch, if you, if you notice the red line, I can touch TX pitch and I can change where I'm transmitting. I'm just gonna escape out, stop the transmitting. I'll show you that. So if I hit TX pitch, I can adjust where I'm transmitting there. Did I hit TX pitch. I think I actually just moved the whole band. Let's see. All I want is TX pitch. Yeah, I guess it. Look at that. It moves the whole thing. That's interesting. Does the pitch stay? Still at 23,400, yeah. Okay. So let's take a look. I have this on the web. We can go to the web. We can go to PSK Reporter. And I'm not quite sure how to get a keyboard here. I'm going to go to PSK Reporter over here on this laptop. And we'll don't type in KCHZKI. We'll see. Did we get out with this little aspidics on the table? Yes, we did. Here we go. Not particularly fantastic, but we definitely covered the United, oh, United States. So it works. Transmit. There you go. All right. Let's get back to the radio. It's not a very good review. <laughs> I know you're all saying that. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. Okay. Let me shake you and show you a few other things. So back to that web view. Um, 
This web view is actually accessible over the network uh, on any browser. So my iPhone, for instance, can be my screen, um, a, a laptop, well, whatever you have. Any, any device with a browser can be used remotely. There's a passcode you set in the software to keep it secure. Uh, on the SBIDX itself, it, it recognizes that it's the local device and you don't have to put the password in, but on any other device on the network, you do have to put in the password. But it's a nicer interface, I think, than the, than the actual radio itself. The uh, web interface is great. I mean, you can see there the decodes on the FT8 are a little easier to see. Um, now there's a built-in log, so if I were to log somebody, I can put their call there. When I'm done, I click OK, and it, it logs it for me, and I can export that log as a native later on. Uh, I actually have Grid Tracker installed on this SBIDIC, so if, as long as I have live internet, I could actually be uploading my uh, logs in real time if I'm working FT8, so I, I wouldn't even have to export later. So I think that's pretty neat. Um, what are some of the other neat features about this? Uh, I mean, as a radio, it works pretty darn well. I, you know, I don't think there's anything out there that quite compares. The X6100 Zygu is another uh, Linux-based radio that some people have written some uh, software for to allow you to do a similar thing to this. Of course, it's got a very tiny screen, so it, it's much more difficult to do these sorts of things on that radio. Same idea though, um, you know, the radio and the device are all in one computer and device, which is what this is. Uh, but it being open source, you know, you can uh, do what you like with it. Uh, the sky's the limit. I actually installed Winlink uh, Pat, the client Pat on this. Uh, it took me a little bit of uh, work, two or three days of fiddling around with uh, getting it right. I and mean, you know, RDOP is not the greatest protocol. It, it do, you know it doesn't compare uh, with Pactor and Vara, but it's all open source, and you can run it on here without uh, any serious manipulation of software. You could probably run Vara on here with the Wine project. Um, that would be for your more advanced Linux users, for sure. Uh, out of the box, without getting into the OS, you can use this radio. I saw that question come up on some forums, you know, can the radio be used by someone that is not necessarily a software guy? And absolutely it could. Um, is it the radio for that guy? Probably not. There's probably some better choices out there. If all you want is a radio, Although for POTA, you know, all in one solution, it, it's six and one half a dozen of the other. Could, could you take a small tablet and, you know, a small, you know, like X, an X6100 or, a, you know, an FT818 or Elecraft KX23 into the field? Absolutely, you know, do the same sorts of things, but this is all in one. And it is written in some very, uh, ingenious code that was commented throughout the code. So if you want to learn how an SDR works, the code in this unit is fantastic. Is Usually, even if a project is open source, people are writing that code to get the job done, not necessarily to teach you how the job is getting done. So when you look at the source code, you're like, wow, this is, this is really overwhelming. You know, I don't know where to begin to understand it. Whereas uh, Ashar has gone through and commented his code. He's got videos about the code. He's written a uh, brief synopsis of how the code works. So you can walk through it and learn the code. And it, it's, it's condensed code that is doing just enough to get the job done, not too much extra. And so you can learn how SDR works by looking at the code in this radio. You know, if you were too crack open a flex radio if it were still open source uh, which is, it is no longer open source but uh, it was at one point but you know by the time you get to that mature of a product that's that's grown over the years you know you wouldn't know where 
to begin to understand the, the source code in that unit. So if, if you're looking to learn uh, how SDRs work, you know, maybe get your hands wet with a little coding, this unit here is fantastic. Uh, it, it's the unit for you. I would strongly suggest it. And if you're just a guy that likes uh, computers, you know, if you're one of those guys that uh, likes using Linux, using uh, a Raspberry Pis in your shack, then uh, this is a great radio for you. You know, you, if you're, especially if you're already used to it, you know, you'll, you'll be able to jump right in and, and you'll know what you're doing. Those who, you know, have not gone down that path and not had that experience, uh, this is the perfect radio to begin with on that journey because it really, uh, really has everything done for you other than the learning part, so. Uh, that, that's it. I don't know what more to say about it. Um, I probably didn't give it a very good review. <laughs> there's there's some uh, better reviews online that go through all the features. You know, hfsignals.com uh, has some good ones. You know, that's where you can actually look at, you know, the, the manufacturer of this radio. He's He's got some good videos there. Um, or just Googling some other YouTube videos. But, you know... Highly suggested. I, re I really like this radio. It's a, it's a great, great device that brings back, you know, the spirit of building a radio like in the old days with Heath kits. Only this time, instead of building the hardware, you're building the software. So uh, have fun with it. KC8ZKI. Take care.